This episode of The Dental Guys is brought to you by The Dental Crafters Network, your implant restorative connection. From surgical planning to patient-specific guides, quality implants, and final restorations, The Dental Crafters Network provides one relationship, infinite possibilities. Call 1-800-472-8302 today. You're listening to The Dental Guys, episode 46, The Endophiles. This week on The Dental Guys, Wes and John transform into Scully and Mulder for an episode of The Endophiles. It's the week you've all been waiting for. We finally discuss which endophile system to use in your practice. How do you decide which system is best for you? Is there a huge difference between rotary and reciprocating files? And what about lower cost alternatives? Do they work? Should we even consider them? The longest root canal of your life continues this week on The Dental Guys. Welcome to this week's episode of The Dental Guys. I'm Wes, The Dental Guy. And I'm John, The Dental Guy. John, we're fresh off of, um, well, sleeping uh, at Spear right. Education's. We woke up finally. Uh, oh, man. Finally, you woke up. I just couldn't. We were, I, I, we were definitely we were, woken up at that, at that course, oh man. Oh, my <laughs> goodness. Obstructive sleep apnea is the leading cause of car accidents. Third leading cause. Third leading cause of car accidents in the United States, John. Whoa. I mean, people are falling asleep while they're driving. And what's interesting is I'm going through the Epworth um, sleep test, the sleepiness test or mm-hmm. questionnaire that, that we're using in our practice now. And I'm asking patients, like, how likely are you to doze mm-hmm. off while sitting in traffic for a few minutes? One or zero, never. One, slightly. Two, moderate. Three, high. And I've got several moderates. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, now People that's disturbing, right? Are driving around. I had this guy in my practice this past week, and he is he drives a truck, yeah. one of those big brown trucks. Oh. I don't know which one. Yeah. I don't know which one we're talking about, but I won't mention any names. But the guy is a fit. He he exercises. I mean, the guy rides mountain bikes, goes on yeah. trail stuff, and guess what? He has OSA, but he's non-diagnosed, okay? Ah. He hasn't even been to had a sleep study. He hasn't done oh, any of those good. things. He says, my family's had it. I'm looking up his nose. I'm looking at his mountain potty score. I'm looking at his tonsillers. I'm looking at his clenching and grinding. I'm looking at his scalloped tongue, and I'm saying, dude, I'm like, do you sleep good? He's like, nope. And he's like, he's like, don't even tell me. He's like, I want nothing to do with it. He's like, because once I do it, he's like, he'll have to track it all the time. And they'll have to yeah. hook me up to one of those machines. And I'm like, oh, man. You know, it's like everybody, I mean, do you want to, here's what I mean, do you want to live longer, John? Because I do. <laughs> I mean, that is, is, is it not, okay, so you're, here's, here's what people think. I mean, like, I got to get my mind around this, is that it's not dentistry, but it is. It's not, it's it's medicine. Right. And this is a medical thing that is serious you know we talk about dentistry all the time on the show and we talk about how it's awesome that you can walk in and fix something immediately like today hey look somebody walked in they had a cavity i fixed it instantaneously somebody walked in they had an abscess i took the tooth out got rid of the source of infection hey with sleep apnea it's a little bit beyond just fixing that's true it's serious it's serious. It's You're serious. Saving, you can save a life, and uh, you can make somebody's life much better. Do and, you snore, you know, John? What's that? Do you snore? Yeah, if I don't wear something, yeah, I do. Right. So what are you? What you're saying, John, is that that if you snore, you need to rule out sleep apnea, obstructive sleep apnea, and and that's one of the things that we we did is that at Spear Education, they're giving us the tools and the knowledge to be able to not diagnose, but to screen people 
for whether there's a concern or not and whether there needs to be some involvement of a medical professional because how many times do you go to the doctor and do they check your malin potty score right do they check and really look in your throat anymore and look at your tonsils and look at the back well, of your throat. and then we were told you know that only that two-thirds of doctors primary care doctors don't even talk about sleep in their exam with a new patient so you know we we were just talk you know we talked about how few of these patients are diagnosed how few of these patients know they have it and that there's probably something like anywhere between 50 to 80 million americans with undiagnosed sleep apnea and this is uh, it's killing people like you say it's killing people because of accidents it's killing people because of cardiovascular events yeah. and whether you whether you look at this as simply you know some people are like well this is a, this is something for the doctors to treat well, we agree. We wish the doctors are treating it. Uh, even if you're just looking at this from a standpoint of your dentistry, you know, that was yeah. the thing that first got me thinking about this is when we heard in the occlusion workshop yeah. that, Hey, you're planning on doing an anterior restoration in somebody who's wearing their front mm -hmm. teeth. You'd better, better check to see if this patient could have apnea, because if they do, you can do everything in the world to design the most perfect occlusion. You can do, you can have them wearing splints. You can do a million things and they'll still break your stuff because right. the urge to breathe is going to win every single time. And so People I think want to live, man. <laughs> right. So if, even if you're just thinking of this from a comprehensive dentistry standpoint and you don't want to get super involved in sleep, you just you need to at be least aware of some signs. To be, yeah. You need to learn about it. Uh, mm -hmm. And that's kind of how I started going into this. But I think after taking this course. Yeah, what are we going to do, John? We don't have much time to talk <sighs> about it today because we've got to get into some very important file systems here. Yeah, man. Uh, the files. Got to get into um, the X files. Open up the files, the X yeah. files. But and I think, yeah, you're right. You're right. I mean, what are we going to do, though? What's you know, our I'm action plan? And, and that's and that's I'm still developing it. You know, where yeah. I'm at right now in my practice is I definitely know I have to I have to integrate this into my practice to some extent. The question is, how far do you take it? So right, right now I'm doing a lot of reading. I ordered a bunch of books. I'm reading all about uh, sleep disordered breathing and uh, reading all about how I can integrate this into my practice. And Somology. Somnology. That's right, man. I got, yeah. I got the books. And so now I feel like I understand what I need to be treating. The question is, uh, there's a lot more things that have to happen. You have to make sure that you understand uh, you have a system in your office to take these patients from start to finish in a way that is smooth, that's predictable. You have to train mm -hmm. your team to understand what's going on and they have to own it because you don't have time to go through to be this by yourself. There has to be buy-in from your team. Yep. Um, let me just say this in conclusion to um, John and Wes and what we think about obstructive sleep apnea. Um, we, we as dental guys are not prepared to advise you. We're not prepared to, to coach you on obstructive sleep apnea. What we know right now is that we know we have to study. John yeah. and I came away with this with a greater respect for the amount of knowledge that it takes to just, than just to, just to start making mandibular advancement devices. Right. We can, anybody can take an impression and make that device. But to truly think about what is going on, we are not prepared to do that. Now, yeah, we will be. We will be. Right. I mean, let me we're just tell you, when John there. says we're reading books, we're reading books. There is four textbooks on my nightstand right now that I'm diving into. And yeah. John is doing the same. And, and just to take it to the next level, both of us are, I know myself and John have just talked, discussed about becoming members of the um, American Academy of Sleep Medicine, the American Academy of Dental Sleep Medicine, the American Thoracic Society, to name a few, that we are joining these organizations because we want to be involved in helping people live longer and get diagnosed. Um, that's our primary concern. And we're going to tell you right now, my recommendation and John's recommendation is that the next time you're at a major meeting that you need to look up a couple of the, our favorite speakers. Mm -hmm. One, Jameson Spencer. Yep. Uh, number two is... Anybody Steve, that Steve Carstensen, yeah, Steve Carstensen, yeah. Um, if you see Ken Burley on yep. the on the docket, it'd be great to see him speak. But I think those are three names that we can give you right now that are doing it at a very high level, 
and yeah. um, that you and just can, figure out and just figure yeah. out where we, we're not saying everybody needs to treat sleep in their dental practice. We we're saying that we were definitely challenged that you can't ignore it. You cannot ignore it in this day and age. You have to be able to understand this. We believe in order to just make your dentistry last longer, yeah. if not get involved and maybe, maybe making a patient's life a whole lot better. So it was definitely a, a challenging course in a good way because you definitely get your uh, found. I mean, when one of the major guys out there, Spears says, I never make any type of splint appliance without <laughs> doing a home sleep test ever. And this is not somebody who's just like, you know, a guy up in a white tower somewhere. This is somebody who's a clinical guy. This is one of those and guys you're going, whenever John oh. and I look at each other at the same time. And did he just say what he just said? Oh, man. We got to get off this topic, Wes, yeah, because we to. this week we are diving back into last time, the last show you guys listened to, we had a great time at Spear interviewing Sam Puri. Great, great interview. We know you guys yep. enjoyed that. But we want to dive back into what you guys have been waiting for, right? You've been waiting for this episode. We got to you developing a glide know. path. We got, we talked about arrogance. We talked about rubber dams. We talked about all this stuff, but now what in the heck do you put into this canal? Once you know that you've got in there and you can find these canals, you see them, you got your glide path. How do you choose a rotary file system? And I think Wes, where we've got to start is we've got to start back at the beginning of how we got to where we are today. And Wes, you found a great great article as we were both doing our research for the show uh wes just emails me this article and i mean it is just a, a great now we, we if you guys haven't checked out uh styleitaliano.org great great website has some some really great geeks on it who There'll are be a, a link on like, our website to download yeah. the pdf so it's a great great article that basically goes back and traces the history of endodontic instruments starting way back in the 1800s, going all the way through the different generations till today. And yeah, so, so you Wes, can read that for yourself, but I mean, like, let's hit some of the highlights. Yeah, let's just go through some of the highlights. I'll start, Wes, with some of the maybe earlier generation, and then you mm -hmm. I'll let you kind of pick it up once we get into the fourth and fifth generation. So, you know, these instruments started off based on this article and what we've read as just people taking pieces of metal and uh, kind of taking little wires and rounding them and using them to get debris out of teeth. So this is where files started. Uh, when we went from that to kind of the traditional stainless steel hand file technique was in the 1900s. We saw uh, that there were people that were actually developing a, a system to use. And then what changed was when Herb Schilder, who's very famous, especially in the obturation world, for figuring out what type of shape that uh, we, we needed, um, we started to see that nickel titanium was introduced into endodontics. It was introduced a lot earlier than I thought, introduced back in 1960. Uh, and one of the companies that really took uh, a lot of these ideas was Tulsa. And Tulsa is kind of near and dear to us because Tulsa is right up the road from me in Johnson City, Tennessee, which is kind of cool. Uh, but the first rotary NITI instrument developed by John McSpadden uh, back in 1992, and at that time, people were breaking files all the time, and they found that a less stiff metal that still had some shape memory would change everything, and it did. So they found, okay, now we have something that can maintain its memory, something that can be more flexible. Now, how do we uh, keep it uh, in the canal without uh, going the wrong direction? So they developed uh, different ways of, of, of shaping the file to make it do certain things, which we'll get into a little bit later. And all of these were constant taper, you know, one taper from the top to the bottom, increasing in size uh, to, to and, and there's a ton of files that you had to have, a ton of files. And so this goes back to anybody that knows about GT, which is one of the first rotary systems that came out. Then into the 90s, uh, we're getting better at rotary. And now we needed to decrease the number of instruments is one of the things that people were shooting for. So we had our second generation, which was things like endosequence, ProTaper, K3. Some of these are still around today. 
Uh, and then the third generation was when we really focused on the structure of the Naitai, which was things like metallurgy, uh, reducing fatigue stresses, uh, improving the alloys. And this is where we had uh, the GTX file, which is one of the big ones at the time, <clears throat> the Vortex file, Vortex Blue, um, and we had Twisted Files by Cybron. Basically, this was taking some, a lot of the same designs, but making it stronger, more flexible, so that you could use fewer files and still get the same results. Since then, Wes, we've still come a long way. A big change has been in reciprocation, right? Yeah, you know, the thing that's interesting is that I'll never forget the first time that I saw a reciprocating handpiece. I was blown away. I was like, man, the technology is able to give us something that is, you know, doing what we do with hand files, doing what we did originally, this watch winding motion, and to yep. actually be able to put that into a rotary handpiece, and we'll discuss here later reciprocation versus actual full-on rotary, but it just seemed like, hey, that makes sense, and that's whenever um, Cliff Ruddle invented uh, Wave 1 system, and um, and Dent Supply released that, uh, recip uh, Reciproke, um, uh, VDW released in 2011, and these two systems kind of like started to, you know, make headway. Mm -hmm. You know, but still, I think the thing that to bring up is that metallurgy allowed us to do these things. And yeah. and then now we've moved on. There's even a fifth generation. Mm -hmm. And um, I think some of these new pro taper next systems, mm -hmm. they have some merit to them. But again, what's going on here is that because of metallurgy, each generation is able to do maybe something different to the shape of the canal, yep. allowing to basically change the design or shape of the change the design of or the shape of the file so yeah. that whenever you do put it in some type of reciprocation or rotary movement that it behaves in a special way that yeah. impacts the shape of your canal yeah and so, so when well and when we saw the changes Wes that you're talking about in the design that was where I think that two at the time, probably back in the early 2000s when you started to see a differentiation of files like Endo Sequence, mm -hmm. GTX, K3 Lightspeed, a lot of these uh, early changes with the new metallurgy, we really started seeing a divergence into two main groups. And we're going to spend a little time talking about this because we think it really is very important if you're trying to choose files because a lot of these things still apply today. One of the types was what's called radially landed files, mm -hmm. and the other was non-radially landed files. Now, uh, before you check out on us and go, oh my gosh, it's back to dental school, just bear with us. because This is we really Geek's think Corner, man, but yeah. I mean, like, it's important for you to understand yeah. this as a budding, you know, endodontist uh, or a an, an GP that's learning how to do good endo, or even somebody that just doesn't know what system to buy. Right. Listen up to what John has to say about some of this file design stuff, because it makes sense. It helps you to really understand why, what the file's doing in the canal. Yeah. And, and so the, the two major factors, you know, this cross-sectional design was one of them, which was radially or non-radially, and then whether the tip was cutting or not. And if you, generally speaking, what a radially landed, radially landed file is, is it's a file that's round, essentially, in, in a way, in cross-section. In other words, there are, uh, you know, you think of a radius. A radius is just a section of, of a line, essentially. And if you can imagine a radius or kind of a curved section of line, this is a type of file that when you twist it around in the canal, it has enough contact with the side of this with these kind of wide radius corners that it stays centered inside the canal. So it's basically contacting the walls with kind of a wide area of contact. And essentially, as it turns, the file walls are going to be in contact uh, all the time with the canal walls, which keeps it very centered in the canal. And this was what some of the earliest files were versus the non-landed files, which often look kind of triangular in cross-section. So if you looked at this in cross-section, you would see like three tips. And these three tips are going to, as you can imagine, be much less uh, 
Uh, they're not going to stay maybe centered quite as much because they're only touching in three small spots. Would you but, say it's more of an aggressive style yeah, file? exactly. So this file potentially is going to cut a little more, maybe is going to be a little quicker, mm -hmm. uh, but is maybe going to stay centered a little less well. Uh, and it doesn't mean this is not good versus bad. This is just different between the two. And then you had tips that could cut and tips that really didn't cut very much. So a great example of uh, a non-landed file would be like endo sequence. It was kind of the classic uh, aggressive uh, cutting file. We cut at the tip, it cut on the sides. Uh, Pro Taper is another non-landed file. And then a good example of a radially landed file will be the original profile, the GT file, the GTX file. Uh, these were all designed to, to stay centered in the canal a little bit more. And even today, when you're talking about different file systems, whether they reciprocate or they rotate, one of the things that you can know a lot about a file system with is whether or not it's radially landed or not. Now there's discussion about whether this matters as much once you start getting into reciprocation because reciprocation doesn't turn the, the file the same way. So maybe you could get away with a little bit more aggressive file and not have it cut quite as aggressively or, or move the, the uh, canal quite as much. And we'll get into that. But it's very important that you understand the difference between the ratedly landed and the non-landed. If you want a good article that talks about this, Back in 2008, there was one of those uh, endodontics colleagues for excellence, uh, uh, little handouts that they put out uh, called Rotary Instrumentation. And it just kind of shows you the cross sections of both of those. We'll put those a uh, link to that in the show notes as well. So you guys can kind of check that out. But when you look at those, those were two of the biggest differentiators in types of files. And then we started seeing differences in the cross section that was variable. So, in, you know, that we said early files were a continuous taper. But now newer files are variable taper. So you could have a file like the Pro Taper is a, a great example of that. If you look at the Pro Taper uh, uh, shaping files versus the finishing files, the shaping files have a very high rate of taper at the coronal half, but a very narrow rate of taper on the apical. So essentially they're designed to cut in the coronal. Whereas the finishing files are the exact opposite. The, the apical portion cuts more or has a higher taper uh, percentage versus the coronal, which doesn't engage because the taper is relatively low. So variable taper became a big deal. And it also is something that's very common in a lot of the reciprocating files because essentially as it advances down, you want it to cut in different parts of the file depending on where you're, where you're at. And Wes, that kind of brings us right into talking about reciprocation versus rotary because, you know, not only is there a lot of controversy about that, but this is where I think our technology is today is having people trying to decide, well, is, well, is, it, is there one versus another? Is yeah. just spinning What's, a file in a canal, you know, right. 360 degrees continuously, rotary instrumentation that is basically rotating continuously in a canal two to 300 RPMs, whatever, whatever your file calls for, or is there some type of clockwise counterclockwise motion, which is what reciprocation is. If you're not familiar with it, basically the file and the motor is set up to actually, you know, do a watch winding style motion. It rotates clockwise and it counter counter rotates. And by doing so, there has been some that have hypothesized that this um, doesn't have the efficiency of that of maybe a rotating file. What does that mean? Well, meaning it'll cut, but it doesn't discharge the debris as fast as maybe you would want it to. As you're cutting, um, it's a little slow at getting the debris augered out. Or some have hypothesized, well, maybe that one file system that uses rotary versus one that might use reciprocation you might shove debris out the apex um, into the PDL, and that might cause post-operative pain. Yeah. And so what we know is that, John, you, you went and found, found an article that I wasn't able to find um, that was published back in October of 2014, uh, Reciprocating Instruments in Endodontics, a review of the literature here. And it's, it's very good. Tell us a little bit about what you found here. 
Yeah, this article, it's kind of from an obscure journal, but it was a really good review. And again, we'll link to it in the show notes so you guys can check it out. Um, but it has a very good review of the differences between rotary and reciprocation as far as what they do, how they work. It talks a lot about wave one because for most of you out there that have uh, gotten into reciprocation or heard about it, that's the system most people talk about. Mm -hmm. And uh, it talks about the fact wave one's very interesting file because it has not only the reciprocation motion of going 150 degrees clockwise and then uh, or counterclockwise and then 30 degrees clockwise but it also has a variable taper uh, and it has a very variable cross-sectional design. So that's a third thing. You know, we talked about taper variability. Mm -hmm. Now we're throwing in uh, variable cross-sectional design. We said earlier there's radially landed and non-radially landed. complex, John. Isn't yeah, so this is pretty interesting instrument because in the, and I'm reading right off of this as we're talking, so I make sure I say this correctly, but you've got in the tip of this, you've got radially landed so what does that mean in the tip it means the tip stays centered very well that's their which, idea which prevents transportation right. of the apex which you don't want right you don't so want to john move the if apex. you were and we'll talk a little bit more about this later but if you were to leave this file in the canal just a little bit longer than maybe an experienced endodontist or an experienced gp endodontist would do it's going to be a little bit better maybe at maintaining position and not transportate or transport that that apex right. at the apex correct now in the middle in the that's right and in the middle interestingly it go it changes uh to kind of a triangular uh with radial lands mm -hmm. and then up to a triangular section without radially landed areas so you've got three different parts of this file a very interesting cross section it's very interesting. And it's kind of a blend of we want to still stay centered at the tip, but we want to cut more efficiently up toward the middle and the top. So very interesting file. But if you look at the lit review on reciprocation, let's just get down to brass tacks here. What does reciprocation do for you that rotation does not do for you? Well, <laughs> let me first say that there's a lot of things that it turns out it really doesn't do much different, which is not bad or good. It just is what it is. There was some discussion about debris removal. There are some studies that show maybe it's a little less efficient at debris removal using reciprocation. And a lot of that is because it takes three cycles of reciprocation right. to, to equal one cycle of complete rotation. So that makes sense. It's maybe going to take a little longer to advance the file down the canal. Debris extrusion, it probably does a pretty good job. Uh, there was maybe more uh, apical debris extrusion, so that's good. Bacterial reduction, equal. No difference in the overall bacteria left in the canal uh, through many, many studies that, that I've seen. There are some that show one or the other, but the majority of them say the same. What about anatomy? What you know, you really find there is that it's a lot about technique. It's really not about the system you use. The anatomy can be maintained using either one if it's used. But it, what I did find interesting that they said that wave one, as one uh, example, it was very important that you have a very good glide path that was mm. larger than size 15, maybe even. That's one of the reasons I think that Tulsa started using those path files that we were talking about or the pro gliders uh, because they, they like the idea of this file needing a little bit more of a wide glide path. Mm -hmm. And then there was some discussion about maybe a few more dentinal cracks possible if you use like a big, because Wave 1's a little bigger file that you start mm -hmm. with compared to some. Uh, but again, not is this a huge deal? No. But one thing I will say, there's no question about that wave one or reciprocation has the potential of doing for you is reducing cyclic fatigue. And Wes, we know what cyclic fatigue is. It is the ability of a file to take force and not uh, wear out or fracture or, or, or to break. And so we know that we want cyclic fatigue resistance and we know that with reciprocation, because essentially if you build up, you can imagine if you're twisting a file into the tooth yeah, and man. you build up force, that's bad. And so the idea with wave one or reciprocation is you, you reduce that torsional stress. Well, that, that was kind of one fatigue. of the main selling points on this thing is that you could run this thing down inside of a, a, a root canal tooth yep. and or a canal and push on this thing and it wouldn't break. 
Yeah. And and I, I don't I don't think it has so much to do with the reciprocation part of it. I think it has more to do with maybe the the, the metallurgy. Behind it may it. be. It may be. And, and I think that basically though we can say with pretty good confidence that you can probably leave a wave one file as an example in a canal for a longer period of time and not have the same cyclic fatigue as a rotary file. Now, again, that's a very loaded statement yep. because you talk to people who do well, uh, root canals all day long. They're going to tell you, hey, you know, I can do that just as long. Just be aware that if you're using it the same basic way as the manufacturer recommends, there's no question that reciprocation has that advantage. The question is whether or not that advantage is worth making a switch to that. And we definitely will get to that a little later well, see, in the show. Here in a little bit, we're going to talk about what John and Wes have used over their careers and what yeah. they're using right now. Because that's what you really want to know. That's what you really want to know. But before we do that, the interesting thing in here is you guys know that we are huge fans of dental implants. Yes, because all this talk it, about teeth, I mean... When you do screw up your root canal... Right. <laughs> when you leave it, the canal in the file too long, right. or the when file in the canal leave, too long. And you break a file off, and yeah. and it's like so bad, or you And it perf, fails. And it fails, and you're like, oh, it'll be okay, it'll be okay. No, it's titanium time. And it could be titanium you know, time. You know the most frustrating thing about... Um, you know, doing dental implants is that, and I know we're kind of jumping ship here, but it'll make sense here, is that doing dental implants for us, John and I, a few years back, were getting so frustrated with having to go to two or three different places to get, okay, over here, I'm going to get my guide made. And then over here, I'm going to buy my implant. Yep. And then, man, I need to get this particular, you know, system and, and it just, like, nobody was talking to one another. And we kept going to these companies and we're saying, hey, look, guys, if you'll just make this and make it like this, it, we just want it to be like that. And we're just so frustrated. Yeah, if we so, wanted we wanted to be able to take what we liked about each thing, you know, a really great guide manufacturer, a really great implant manufacturer, and a really great lab that made great crowns. If What if you could get the best of all of those things and you well, could have it in house to where you could actually John. talk to the people responsible for one thing, yep. responsible for the other thing and, and get them on the phone and talk through a case and plan a case and have everything work together. That would be amazing. And, and, you know, there have been some companies that have tried this, but from Wes and I, from our perspective, there's been, well, there's one been company, copycats of other implant companies, and yes. you know, one company has done this, and we're proud to say that the dental guys um, um, are sponsored by the Dental Crafters Network. And um, from here's the thing: is that the Dental Crafters Network has put three companies um, that do three different things very well, but they're able to communicate with one another, yes. and it's all under one roof. And so we have one, the crown down technique. Okay, so when you're planning your dental implant after you've done your root canal and it failed, and you're going back and you're taking mm -hmm. the tooth out, you want to do a if you want to do rapid precision guided surgery. Cr everybody's talking about guided surgery these days, making their own guides. I don't have time, John, right. to make my own right. guide. All nope. I want to do is take a CT scan take an impression, a high, a high quality impression, or in my case, a true def scan, upload the case to the Dental Crafters Network, and they call me at Implant Solutions, which is one of those companies under the Dental Crafters Network, and they've talked to the guys over in Dental Crafters, the prosthetic division, and they said, okay, we went ahead and did your virtual wax up for that single tooth that you're replacing, and here's what it looks like when we put that implant in here, do you want a surgical guide for this case? And I'm like, sure, give me a surgical guide. Well, do you want it depth and angle corrected? Well, yeah, we've got a system for that. I'm like, well, what system's that? You know, John and I have, have you know, placed a lot of different style of implants, been involved with placing a lot of dental implants. But in the Dental Crafters Network, we have Argon Dental, which makes a very 
good dental implant. John, tell us a little bit about the dental implant. Tell us how it works inside the system of the Dental Crafters Network. Yeah, as Wes said, you know, you've got your you've got your planning going and you you know now where the tooth needs to go because that's where it all starts. Uh, you know that you have a great guide and now uh, Implant Solutions is on the phone with you designing the guide and says, okay, well, we've got an implant system that's fully depth guided and angle guided and we can give you uh, an implant that has some really nice features. And I remember when uh, we first learned about this implant, this wasn't an implant that dental crafters per se, the lab developed. This is a really high quality company out of Germany that's been in the implant business a very long time, very big in Europe. And uh, the Argon K3 Pro system, uh, we're talking about an implant that has all the features that all the other companies have been kind of rushing to get to for the last five to 10 years that we know and trust from other systems that have been doing it a long time. We know deep internal conical connections work. They are very nice and tight and secure. We know that they decrease bacterial contamination. They may decrease micro movement. They may decrease micro gap. They may even decrease bone loss around the implant interface. Well, K3's got all that. They got all that. They have a deep connection. They have a nice bevel that allows for increased soft tissue thickness. They have two different designs of their implants. For those of you who like uh, more of an aggressive thread or those of you who like more of a parallel walled kind of traditional low insertional torque value, if you want to do immediate implants, they've got an implant for that. You want to do more of a delayed type of uh, healing, uh, two-stage approach, they've got implants for that. They've got short implants. They've got wide implants. They've got a lot of prosthetic components that are only possible by having a very small and agile company who can respond to the needs of its customers and make changes, which Wes, you and I both know how much more important that is now with all these big consolidating companies yeah. who are just swallowing up these small companies well, and making them into kind of just the corporate mentality. Well, with the Dental Crafters Network, you've got small companies working together. They have the ability to do all the things the big companies can do, but they'll actually pick up the phone when you call and let you talk to somebody mm. who knows what they're talking about. That's one of the reasons we're so proud to be able to endorse them is because we've used the big companies. Big, Some of the big companies are great. They have great products, but the problem is the integration is just sometimes not there. And then you look at what they're doing at the Dental Crafters Network with Implant Solutions, with Argon Dental, with Dental Crafters, to be able to see a case through, whether it's a single unit, whether it's a, a hybrid, whether you want to have immediate placement or not, they can do all that, Wes. It's amazing. So from surgical planning to patient-specific guides, quality implants, and final restorations, the Dental Crafters Network provides one relationship, infinite possibilities. Listen, the dental guys want you to call 1-800-472-8302 today or head over to dentalcrafters.net. Tell them the dental guys recommended um you know, that you call, you know, ask for Selene over there, ask for someone that can help you out. Listen, John and Wes are proud endorsers of the Dental Crafters Network, and we thank the Dental Crafters Network for sponsoring this episode of The Dental Guys. So let's just assume here that you are you didn't break your file, and you've got, <laughs> I hope you know, because we, we had, I mean, you know, let's just it's assume. It's a gut so, feeling. I mean, John. It's the worst you feeling. You know when it happens, it's like. Yeah, all this, oh, all this implant <laughs> discussion sucks. just makes me, like, just think about that. And, and I think one of the things that is important for us is to maybe go through to help you guys out there who are trying to make decisions on files. And, and we're not experts. Wes and I are not ended on us, but we've definitely yeah. taken a ton of CE on this over the years. We haven't even really talked about endo. Like you say, it took us 40 some episodes to get there because there's just so much information, but we've actually taken, that was probably where both of us started with doing a lot of yeah, advanced because it's CE a practice builder was in endo because yeah, if you want to, you want to build your practice, stop referring your molars out. I'll tell you one of the most profitable procedures, one of the most patient changing procedures that you can have in your practice. So where do we start? I'll go through a little bit about how I got to where I'm at. Wes will do the same and then we'll kind of sum it up with talking about what we think you guys should look at in a file system. 
So for me, when I was in school, and I think for you, it was very similar, Wes, we were first taught using uh, a hand file approach with a step back technique. So we would use <laughs> stainless steel K files, we would go in there with our little O2 taper oh, K files, and we would just file and file and file till our wrist was about to fall off. Dude, then we did would you ever get, get a blister on your thumb? Oh man, I got blisters. I think I still have those blisters. And yeah. so you would, you'd be in there for three hours, you know, six hours, whatever it was, creating... <laughs> Your master apical file preparation, stepping no back. No tugback, John. Start yeah, all over. Exactly. <laughs> you have no tugback, sir. You fail. Yeah. And you would you would just be, what is tugback? I shouldn't use that, that term. I but know, anyway, so yeah. you, you just, you know, you'd get to the point where you would wear out your wrist doing this, this, this step back. You finally get where you need to go. And now you're going to do... You know, pretty much the, the 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 slowest process known to man too of cold lateral Were condensation. You scared which, to go into, to the which we'll talk about. Yeah, you've already I mean, I temporized the tooth sixteen <laughs> times. You know, and and but we I remember it being such a revelation when no oh my word they brought out two systems for us to to work on in the rotary world. We we had sure. Profile GT. It was Christmas, and and we had at the at the end my last year. We could also choose endo sequence uh, if we wanted to try that as well. So we got a chance to try uh, radially landed, uh, kind of old school, lots of files to choose from in Profile GT, which is very uh, scary looking system when you first look at it because there's a ton of files. Ton of files, first generation system. Yep, older generations, great, great system, but man, a mm -hmm. lot of files. And mm -hmm. then endo sequence where you got to feel what it felt like to have a more aggressive uh, cutting yeah. type of uh, type of uh, file. When I got into, out into practice, uh, when I started, immediately, uh, you know, the person I wanted to practice with started, he was big in endo, and so we started going to some good courses, and right about that time, right about that time, the progression from Profile GT to GTX was happening, and Man. Steve Buchanan was uh, just killing it on the lecture circuit, circuit talking about this. And we went out and we took some courses out in Santa Barbara with these amazing endodontists. And uh, we learned about GTX. Now, at the time, Pro Taper was coming on the market, but it was kind of new. And, and people were saying, hey, if you're not very experienced, maybe you want to stay away from it because it cuts really aggressively. So I got into GTX. And I, I want to say that I feel like I How became... How many 3006s did you use? Oh, man. I remember they called it the hero file. It's you know, the hero 20, file, right? The 2006 was the hero <laughs> file, and then I would finish everything in a, just about in a 3006. 3006, you know, baby. 3006 or 4008. <laughs> match cone for that 3006. Yeah, man. Yep. And I got yep. really good at endo using GTX. Yeah. So then my I after I had done a ton, a ton of root canals with GTX, ton, and I felt really good about it, and I started using a little bit of a hybrid of, of that, in, in, including... Uh, Vortex Blue, a small Vortex Blue 2015, and mm -hmm. I, or a, a 1506, I'm sorry, and also the SX file from ProTaper. I became, I drank the Kool-Aid a few years ago of using ProTaper. I really, I, I, yeah, I, I took some Ruddle courses and I, I took some hands-on and it really changed the way I thought about Endo. And I started using ProTaper. And so where I'm at now is I use ProTaper for... 99% of my endo, uh, and I use it pretty much the class, and it's the gold, it's the Pro Taper Gold, and it's pretty much the classic Pro Taper approach, which we can get into later, but it's it's basically just as it's taught. Yeah, the just S1, follow the instructions, the that's S2, what John does. The he F1. reads the instructions. Yeah, man, the F1 and F2, and I love my SX file, which again, we'll talk about later, and my associate uses Wave 1, and that he, he uh, pretty much came right out of school using wave one so he's had that uh, uh that file system wow. so we use we use wave one in in uh, for him and pro taper for me and and wes i know some of your stuff is similar in terms of yeah, your I training mean, I'll, right? I'll, I'll go a little bit faster because it's very similar so started out the same way john did o2 hand files step back technique and uh reciprocation and and then went right into residency and started, uh, I mean, I'll never forget the first week of residency, they pulling over the rotary instrumentation and here come out, here come the profile and the GT files <laughs> and even the pro taper was sitting there. And I remember mm -hmm. us talking about, you know, pro taper, let's get you, let's get you going on the GTs and let's do some extracted teeth and let's figure out, you know, if you want to start using pro taper and, and I never went the pro taper route until 
probably after I graduated residency. And then that was about the time that I got frustrated with endo um, and um, went to see Steve Buchanan and did a hands-on course with him. And I drank the Kool-Aid of the GTX. And man, let me just tell you right now is that GTX changed my career as Mm -hmm. a general practice endodontist um, because um, it gave me the consistency I was looking for. It gave me repeatable, predictable results. And for years, like you, John, I used GTX and it was like the miracle files, the 2006, the 3006. And it was like, oh my goodness, this really does work. And I'm starting to understand at that point in time, because I did have some experience with ProTaper, what the advantages of different file shapes were doing to the canals. And as I read and went to more CE over the first probably, let's see, probably the first seven years of my practice, um, you know, I started to kind of realize, okay, there are some limitations to the GTX file system. And I started looking at, well, okay, what could be different? And I remember that, um, someone challenged me and said, you need to truly look at wave one. And, mm. um, and, and I surprising to my whole team, because you have no idea whenever you find a system like pro taper in John's hand and, and GTX in my hands right now. And the files like the SX that he's talking about that I use as well. And that whenever you find a system in root canal therapy, that does really, really good. When I changed to wave one, my team could not believe it. (laughs) Like, they were like, what are you doing? Like, you do good endo. Why are you changing? That was their question. Like, why? And I said, just trust me. I said, there are a few things that I like about wave one. The metallurgy makes sense to me. I just need to jump a couple of generations up and see what it does. I trusted it, and and I'm still using it. Now, um, I do some hybrids techniques sometimes. And what does that mean? Well, it means I use the technology of the Wave 1 to, do, to get me to certain points, but I also have the knowledge of what the GTX did for me. And sometimes I come back to that. And um, But for me, you know, um, GTX was a game changer for my practice. Yeah. I think it was for John's as well. Absolutely. Because that's when I mean, we kind of realized, you know, what files yeah. do. And you, you know? Yeah, and I think the thing about GTX and those types of file systems is you learn – the limitations of certain files. You learn yep. that I remember when we had, you know, first gotten the torque sensing motors, you know, where yeah. you could program your motor to sense the torque that the file could take. And that was really, really and interesting. And it would auto reverse. Yeah, it would tell you when so, you were pushing. And that that got me. Let me interrupt you on that, that just for a minute there. I mean that that kind of is a game changer too. But mm-hmm. here's here's the thing. You're coming out, you're starting private practice and 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 I had a two endodontists that lectured to us in my town that I finished my residency in, which is where I practice now. And I said, look, you know, I'm looking at starting my own private practice. I had at that time, um, Cavo electric hand pieces. Cavo had the option on their electric hand piece to buy a gear reduction hand piece that would get me down to between 100 and 400 RPMs, which is what GTX and GT files were rated for but there was no auto reversing. So Mm -hmm. I remember I went to the endodontist that I referred to and I said, Hey, what do you think about this? And I said, it doesn't auto reverse like the ones we had in the nice, you know, aseptico. You all know the ones I'm talking about. The big block. Endo DC, DTC one. Yeah, they're they're fantastic. They got the files programmed in there and they auto reverse. And he said, Wes, how many files did you break in endo? Or how many cases did you break files on? in residency i said none i said but i know he said but it's going to happen right and i said yes it's going to happen he said you know how hard you can push a file because you've done enough cases now and he said do you want to tell you how many years i practice with air driven latch lock Mm hand pieces Mm -hmm. he said for years we didn't have electrics yeah and he said and so then i'm at i'm at you know again i went for the first two years of my practice frustrated about my root canals And I went to Steve Buchanan's course and I remember pulling him aside, like, and showing him a case I was working on on the bench top. And I said, let me ask you a question. I said, I I love these hand pieces here. I said, this is cool stuff. This auto reversing torque sensing technology. I was like, but I use this. I told him, I said, I can't, he said, I have some of the same systems in some of my, some of my ops. 
And he said, mm-hmm. I don't have auto reversing on everything. I'm thinking Steve Buchanan's got everything. He doesn't because it's all about that tactile feel. Mm-hmm. Now, so that tells you that you don't, and for seven, eight years, I practiced without an auto reversing handpiece. And you say, well, did you have many file separations? No, I didn't. Now, I had file separations, but I did not have a lot of file separations that I didn't feel like were because I had didn't have an audio. It was because I knew I was pushing the file too hard. Yeah, and, and that's, and I know, think, what you learn from you know, some of those systems is you start to learn limitations and you learn um, how to establish the stuff that we, that's why we talked, didn't talk about this first is we talked about it last episode about it, the endo episode about how to establish a proper glide path, how to get to where yeah. you're actually ready to start rotary and how to understand uh, the system you're using with that in mind first. And, and I think that's, if we talk about the difference between say wave one, Pro Tape or GTX. Let's just briefly talk about how they work differently in the canal. You know, if yeah. you talk about GTX, which is similar to the old GTs in profile, you're pretty much going to be advancing this can, this file down the canal, kind of like a pecking motion down the canal. And you can take classes on the exact technique, but just understand that you're basically advancing it till you meet resistance, and then you're going to withdraw it, and you're going to advance it and meet resistance, and you're going to withdraw it, and so on. With wave one, it's a similar approach. You're going to advance the file down until you meet resistance and withdraw it, but it's a little safer perhaps because there's less cyclic fatigue issues. So that's your advantage there with a wave one approach. Uh, you're getting and potentially using fewer files because definitely and, with GTX to wave too, one, to it's speak a big to change. The way that that tip of that file, the thing that intrigues me about the tip of the wave one is the fact that it is still a radio landed file. It's not... Yes. It's, 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 it's not, not a, it's not going to move around uh, at the apex. And that's right. the thing with pro taper. But you have very, to understand too, my technique, yeah. John, is I, I leave my files in my canals a little longer probably than the average Joe. Mm-hmm. But again, I was trained by Steve Buchanan who leaves his files in the longer, you know, yeah. a little longer. So I feel good about the way one. It's interesting that I'm using Cliff Ruddle's file with Steve Buchanan te- right. tactics. Well, you know, but that, but but pro taper, just just to kind of complete that thought on 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 how the files work differently in the canal, because you're exactly right. You know, you you may do it a little differently, but how does pro taper change the game on that? Well, pro taper is very different, mm-hmm. and with pro taper, because you have a non radially landed file, you can't leave the file in the canal for a very long That's time right. at all. You need to get in and out, and it's a different motion. It is totally than what different. GTX was. It's more of a brushing motion, and with Wave One, that's the recommendation a little bit as well. Yep. is that you brush with it rather than peck. Um, and Pro Tapers is the original kind of brushing motion. You're basically taking this file down to length, and then you're brushing away from the frication. If there is a frication, you're right. brushing please away. Please do that. That's that's yeah. that's. I think that's a pearl. If you're listening to this, please brush away from the frication. Yeah. I'll never forget an endodontic resident telling me that. And why? Because there's there's not very much dentin towards right. the furcation, and you can strip perf right. really quick. And yeah. I've seen it a lot with people that use Pro Taper files incorrectly, is they use it like a GT file or a GTX. Right. It's not meant to use like that. You do not peck yeah. with that file. Yeah, and you don't and, keep putting it back in and back in and back in and back in. Yes. Yeah, but the news. way that it's designed is you're basically taking, you know, again, if you look at the Pro Taper lineup, you'll see that there's the S1, S2, which basically cut in the coronal and the apical part of that file very, very small. So you establish your glide path, your S1, S2 goes down into the canal and only cuts the coronal. So you, so remember in the last episode, we talked about how the whole idea of establishing a glide path was that you start with something like the SX or gates so that you're 10 or 15 is only engaging the apical part of the root mm-hmm. canal. Well, that's how the pro taper is designed. It's designed to where the first files you put in, they only cut in the coronal. That's right. And then you put your finishers in, and now they're only having to work the apical part of the canal. So whereas wave one is designed to try to do both at kind of the at same the, time. At the same time. Yeah, and so it's so not... So that's why they only have three files. Right. There's fewer files, and, and potentially, you know, in some some canals, you get away with one file, potentially, and whereas with Pro Taper, you're definitely using more files. Now, probably Pro Taper, I think the studies we were looking at, it's probably a little quicker. You know, Ruddle had an interesting article. 
great article just talking about, hey, Pro Taper's great. Wave One's great. I designed them both. He says in the end, I like Pro Taper. I use Pro Taper. It's <laughs> I love the, the fastest guy, man. system. It's so used why did by, he even develop Wave One, John? Why did he well, even develop it? Yeah, and that was an interesting comment that he makes. You know, he says that that although he uses this, he says, you know, um, that one it's a remarkable I love I love this little sentence here. He says it's remarkable yep. how a single wave one file can safely transition a secured canal, which means one that has a glide path from a size 10 file to a final shape that resembles a 2508 file. What's a 2508 file? It's the finisher two, the F2 yep. in Pro Taper. So the secret to this, this is the file design, the M wire technology. And he says, why did I why did I develop wave one? Because it's for any clinician who has concerns about any of the following. And he says, using stainless steel files for shaping canals, breaking files, ledging curve canals, transporting the foramen, using too many files, mastering hybrid techniques, or spending too much time preparing tech, preparing canals. So he says, hey, if you want, if you're worried about any of those things, this may be something that makes your life a little easier. Because let's just be honest, Pro Taper is much more technique sensitive than Wave 1, for sure. You gotta do certain things. If you do them wrong, you can mess things up. If you do them right, you're maybe a little bit quicker, maybe, on some canals. But man, Wave 1 is a great, great technique as well. You just have to know the limitations of the system that you're using. And that's why I think both Wes and I are gonna get good results. But Wes, really in the end, what people wanna know yeah, it's what should they buy? Is what should they buy? And I think we should talk about that. I think we should split this out well, into this the, into what you should buy. And this really is from the dental guys. You know, let's go right to that. Like the dental guys consensus on files. Let's call this the X files, the true X files. The let's true reveal X-Files. the mystery behind the curtain here. If you are just starting out and you you uh, really I mean, don't have a have lot of experience. Answer. Yeah. You don't have a lot of experience. You're just maybe out of school. I mean, I'm still, t- I talked to somebody just the other night, Michael, uh, shout out to uh, Michael. For, uh, he knows who he is, who I got to meet, who's a fan of the show. Great, great uh, dinner yeah, the other night. I appreciate night, Mike. what Michael's doing up there, you know? Yeah. Take it to the next level, Michael. Exactly. It's awesome. Awesome to get to, to get to meet him. Um, you know, Michael was telling me about how in, uh, re- in dental school, he did very little endo. He did, he did, I think, no molars, if I remember right, or maybe one. Man. And use pretty much all hand files. So he's somebody that doesn't really have a feeling for endo in the first place and doesn't have a feel, especially for rotary yet, because he just hasn't had much experience. If or you if put, you're listening to this, yeah, and you're yeah. like totally lost. Right. Then this is where you need to start right here. Yeah. Yeah. We What we think is that if you're in that boat, don't, if you talk to your Tulsa rep, Oh man, now this is where don't, yeah. we're going to say, don't talk Stop. to the Tulsa rep. Because what the Stop. Tulsa rep is going to be thinking is, what can I do to reduce the amount of complications oh, I that, save this, you money that right this now. guy has, right? Yeah. I'm going to save you money. He's going to sell you a system. And probably that will be wave one. Only because, only because he's going to say it saves you money. It's easy. It's great. It's only but, three files. Right. But what we would say is the thing that really made us good at Endo was what? It was when we were using GTX and why? Because you learn the limitations of files, you learn what different tapers mean, you learn what different tip sizes mean. And it's and still we, a great system. It's a great it system. It's still a great system. And the key is not necessarily GTX, but choose one of the major radially yeah. landed file systems. That could be, you got GTX, that's, our, that's maybe the one we recommend the most just because we used it and we're just fanboys. You've got Vortex Blue also by Tulsa. You've also got the Twisted File System, which is by Kerr, Cybernendo. Mm-hmm. These are all excellent. And the reputable companies. Here's what you're saying is that we're not recommending a rogue, like, oh, this one's really cheap. Right. Uh, you no, need no, to no. stick. Not stick to with start. The, not to start with. Not to start. Listen, the last thing I think John you would want us to do, uh, want any budding endo guy that's wanted to, you know, just learn is talk to talk to a trusted specialist. Yeah, definitely. You know, I mean, talk to somebody in your town that you're referring to. And if you don't know anybody, find somebody. Call back at your school and say, look, I'm thinking about buying into one of these systems for a while and stick with it. Four yeah. or five years of practicing with GTX, Vortex Blue, or Twisted File Systems is not going to hurt you. You're going to do great endo. Yeah. Remember, irrigation is the key. 
Yeah, you that's know? right. Glide path, irrigation, glide path, irrigation. All the stuff we talked about in the last episode matters much more than the system that you choose. But we would say that the system you choose starting out matters from a standpoint of learning the feel, uh, because wave one, as as great as it is, is a There's great no, system. It, it definitely doesn't ma- make you understand it's, what you're really doing. You're you basically really... combining. <laughs> Three different tapers, yep. different uh, cross sections, and different sizes of tips into like condensing and, everything down. And and while it can work, if it doesn't work, you don't really you understand do? why it doesn't work. Right? Yeah, exactly, man. So okay, so Wes, let's say that you've been using <clears throat> one of these types of systems, or maybe any system. Let's say you've been doing endo for five years, ten years, twenty years. Yeah, but you're having you're, you're thinking, okay, I, I'm like what I'm seeing. There's some frustrations here, you know? Yeah, yeah. Like but there's you're some going, frustrations. What problems do you think people will want to fix that would make them want to change file systems? What faster. are some things? The yeah. first thing is faster because no one wants to set and do a bunch of root canals where they have like 10 files, 10 files set in there that they've went through. Yep. You know, because it takes forever, you know? Right. And as a seasoned clinician, you just want to get in and get out because you understand it and you understand tactile sensation. So I think the thing that you're going to want to first do is you're going to want to get faster. Yeah. And that's what some of these file systems like Pro Taper, Wave One, maybe using some hybrid technique because you've you understand now what a given file system can do and what it can't do. And whenever you get into a situation, you're like, you know what, I need to go back here and get that file system. Because, hey, John and I both still have GTX in our arsenal. It's still in there. It's not being used very frequently. Right, right. I John's still got, got it. Wave, John's got Wave 1 in his office because he has yep. a clinician using Wave 1. Yep. And so there are point in times where you have to make a gut call on, hey, look, this is a case where I need a different file. What problems are you trying to overcome? Are we trying to want to be faster? Okay, if we want to be faster, then I think we need to start looking at something like a Pro Taper. Um, you know, gold. I think we need to look at the new Wave 1 gold. I think we need to start looking at, well, what what are we trying to do as far as efficiencies go? Mm -hmm, Because mm -hmm. there is some sense to decreasing the number of files used in a canal. Now, one thing that we will say to the seasoned clinician that I've seen time and time again come up over the years, and and to some credit, uh, Tulsa has somewhat debunked this ability, is the ability to reuse files. That mm. is not a way to become more efficient. That is a oh, way man. to break the rules, skirt the system, yeah, and, and break set your yourself, files. Break your files. Do yeah. not do that. Listen, young clinicians, once a file has been fatigued and ran through the autoclave, again, it should never be used again. I don't nope. care. Never, never. And so the way these new it. file systems work is that the little part that goes in your latch lock, there's a little plastic grommet on there that actually swells that won't allow you to get that into the handpiece. Sure, you could cut it off. Sure. You cut it off, but these files were never meant to be run through an autoclave. And some people are like, oh, they're just trying to make us buy more files. But no, we completely disagree with that. We know that there is a definite increase in cutting efficiency with the brand new Don't you think, John, that a seasoned clinician has spent enough time with some of these systems over their five to 20 years of practicing that they could probably go out to some of the trade shows and walk around and cut through the muck and ask questions. And for instance, the, the name comes up all the time and they, people ask us this all the time. Mm-hmm. Should we be using like a company like Edge Endo, John? Yeah. I mean, and that's a, it's a common question that we hear people talking about. And um, I think that I would say um, I feel like Edge Endo is probably the future in terms of the type of company that we will see creating competition in the marketplace. There's obviously, you know that they're effective when you start seeing flyers coming from Dense Ply Tulsa, yeah. where yeah. they're directly taking aim at Edgendo, trying to say that it's not as good. You know that that means it's <laughs> that it is making inroads in terms of market share. But what should we be using it? My yeah. take on this and Wes's take on this is we've talked about it. Um, we think that if you are starting out, it's definitely not the thing to start with. We think that you should start with one of the major companies making one of the major systems that's proven, that has a lot of research behind it, uh, that is taught in major universities, that it's taught at CE courses, and we think you should go take those CE courses, uh, 
I, I kind of have a little bit of an issue with a company that sells a file saying it's the exact same, mm -hmm. but doesn't even teach CE courses on it. That is to me a little bit of an issue. It's a little bit of an issue that they don't have major uh, clinicians teaching it. Uh, I, I, at least I don't know of. if maybe it, they do and we don't know about it. But I think that the place for Edge Endo is when you have experience and you understand the differences between different files and you've had some years of experience, I would experiment with it on extracted teeth and see if you feel side by side that it does the same thing as what your file system is doing. We definitely, both of us know people that are using it that would swear by it. We also both, I think, know people that would swear at it and say it's, it's horrible and, and they don't want to use it anymore because they've had issues with it unwinding or whatever. I personally, all day long, use Edge Endo's SX file because the SX file is so huge in my practice. I use it in every case, and it's half the price. And it's a starter file, too. You're only using that in the chronal third. Yeah, you so. never get that anywhere near anything that could fracture or right. break, so I'm not worried about that. But see, so the only I, reason you understand that is you understand what the SX file is totally for. Right, right. And so, so you've done enough Endo to really grasp that. You know? Right. I just, and so I think we just need to be careful not having it be the first company you go to, but I think you definitely should, as you get experience, experiment with it. Um, and you know what else I would talk to you about it is your endodontist. I bet yep. some people would be surprised to find out that their endodontist may be using more edge endo than they think. And the reason why, why is the endodontist using it? Some people are like, oh, my endodontist is trying to save money. No, if you've listened to the one minute of this episode, hopefully what you're catching here is, the file system doesn't matter yeah, as man. much as what the manufacturers want you to think. So if your endodontist is really is good, not a miracle worker part yeah, of this thing. You man. give Steve Buchanan Edge Endo, and he's gonna get great he's gonna crush results. It. And it's and I mean he would never admit it, but I I, I would say because he you know he has a financial well, interest a, in some of these other companies. Geek, so, <laughs> but yeah, but I mean at the endodontist, the typical endodontist who's really good. I bet can use Edgendo all day. The question is, do you have enough experience that you can feel the difference and you can know whether or not you're getting yourself into problems? Just the think twice before between, basing it on cost. It's the difference between hitting a um, a golf ball that is four dollars, okay, and a golf ball that is two dollars. Is that the most experienced golfer? can definitely feel the difference, hit, change the spin characteristics. They understand the nuances that go into that. And someone that's inexperienced, they just need to get out there and hit the ball. Yeah. And, and what we're telling you that are experienced, we think there's merit to some of this stuff. Yeah. But we also think that you got to take a look at it, you know, yep. and study it. And don't just jump ship. I think that's the first thing I'm going to say. Yeah. is don't jump ship. Look how long John and I use GTX. Yep. You know, look how long, you it know. It takes a while to master dude, a file system. It does. Like, I felt like that whenever I switched to Wave 1, I felt like there for the first couple of months, I'm like, well, well, maybe I need to go back. Yeah. Am I really understanding what's going on here? So I think what you'll get from us when we close out the endo files, and <laughs> uh, we're saying that as a, you know, budding endodontist, GP or an endodontist that you need to find a system that is going to give you consistent predictability that you can learn tactile sensation. I think that the thing from a season perspective is that now you can start branching out and you can really, you know, Hey, if you want to start using some cheaper file systems, that's fine, but know what you're using. Like John says, the SX file is never going to be used past, you know, any curves or anything like that. And that's being safe. That's being smart. Right. And there's a place still, to save money in endo. And, and, and so, you know, you find those things out as you go on, you know, there's things yeah. you can save money on. And then there's some things that, you know what, even if it is a little bit of a savings and you might be able to get away with it, that just be very, very sure. Yeah. And I would just say, and we've said this again and again, before you put anything in a patient's tooth, Thank you. you need to practice with it on extracted teeth and you need to do it a Not bunch. these acrylic burr blocks, people. No. You need to get yeah. some extracted teeth, put them into a uh, hypochlorite solution or something to preserve them, and you need to work some cases on them before you just start buying stuff because some rep or some magazine or whatever, you're going to save some money. Dude, in the end, the profitability of root canals is it's really amazing. good. 
but it's, it's all going to go away if your canal, if your root canal fails because you broke a file because you tried to save some money on something. So we're not saying Agendo is not great. It may be the best thing ever, but know why you're using it. Don't just base your decisions on cost. You know, yeah. we, it, it's just, it's when it's, you get into an episode like this, Wes, people just want the bottom line. But what, you know, we keep coming back to this, that it's much more than that with our right. show. We yep. don't just want to give you the bottom line, although we want to give it to you, but we want to try to say, you know, go beyond just ask, tell me what you, I should buy. You know, that's right. great, but we want you guys to, you, you are the doctor, become the expert, understand why you're doing what you're doing so that no matter what happens in dentistry, you can be the guy that has the answers to the reason why you're doing something and not just doing it because somebody told you to do it. We challenge you guys, yep. go do some research, figure out out, give us some feedback. If you feel like you've got something that we don't, that you've learned about endo files, especially give us, give us what you're, what's working for you. Yeah, I think it's great. Good advice, John. I'm excited about the closing episode coming up. This has been According to some people, we know you're out there listening right now <laughs> that this has been the longest root canal of my career. <laughs> and and um, next nice. week, we talk about one of my favorite subjects, uh, obturation, and what I think about it and what John thinks about it. I think you'll be surprised about what we've done over the years and why it's worked. Um, and uh, I think you probably already know why it's worked um, because um, I'm excited. I'm excited. We're also going to talk about post, core, and crown. And um, I think you're going to be surprised about what John and I, what we think about some of these things. You might not, you might not, but you also might think that we're cowboy. And, but just a little teaser, just stay tuned because it could get a little interesting next week on the dental guys. Mm -hmm. So for um, the dental guys this week, we really want to thank again, uh, the dental crafters network for sponsoring us. I'll go and plug them again, John. Yes, thank do, you guys. do check them out. I mean, they are legitimate. John and I would never endorse. You guys should know this is that from from here on out, if we ever have a show sponsor, don't say, oh, they're bought and sold. Listen, we will hold them accountable because yeah. if we hear crap, we will call crap out. You know, yeah. that's what we want you to know, because the dental guys is all about taking things to the next level. And that's what the show's about. We want you to take your root canals to the next level. And we want you to do that by, hey, giving us a shout out on Facebook, on Twitter, go over on iTunes. And whenever you subscribe to our show or tell your friends, make sure they give us a five star review. We like five star reviews. It helps our show. It also helps if you go over to the YouTube channel. Some of you haven't subscribed to the YouTube channel and you can watch us talk about these things. I think it's funny to watch John and I use our hands. We kind of get a little more excited on the screen. You can see our body language. And so watch us on our, our the YouTube channel. Plus it's we cool look amazing. Oh, we, we always look amazing. Look at my yeah. studio back here, John. It's amazing. I, Your studio, so, I, need to, I need to upgrade my studio. Well, we're going to work on that too. Yeah. So, you know, it's, it's uh, one of these things that we, we are proud to do is we're proud to offer you guys advice and we're humbled uh, by it. We're just trying to surround ourselves with greater minds than we are. And so for John and Wes, we are the Dental Guys. Mm -hmm.